Hi, I'm MTG, and welcome to another Deck Tech Breakdown. Today we're going over Commissioner Severna Rain, and she was out of the Forces of Imperium Precon, which was the Esper Precon. And I'm really stoked on this because I had never really paid attention to like the Warhammer uh, game at all. I don't even really know how it works, but I think the lore and some of these cards actually worked pretty well with Magic. And what this card does specifically, I think is going to be a powerhouse of a commander. So let's jump right into it. They are three CMC, and they're in my favorite color combination, which is Plains and Swamp, or off. And what's cool about what this commander does is whenever they attack, each opponent loses X life, where X is the number of other attacking creatures. So that's huge right there. That is one heck of a possible win con. And I think something else that makes this commander even more crazy and powerful <laughs> is their other ability here, which is Summary Execution. So if you pay two, you can sacrifice another creature, you gain two life, and draw a card. So with that, not only do you have a win con with your commander in the command zone, but you have an ability to gain life and draw cards just by sacrificing creatures. And guess what? Orzhov's really good with aristocrat style sack fodder type things, so it's not going to be a huge deal to sacrifice your own creatures in this color combination. So I think when we look at this, what, it, what does your commander want to do? It wants to swing out with a lot of other creatures, and you don't even have to deal combat damage to get this trigger. It's just if you attack. So I think when you're doing that, it's important to keep in mind that as long as you're just attacking with creatures, it doesn't matter how big or how tough they are. So what does that mean? It means that we can lean into sort of generating tokens. So you, one ones, whatever you make, it's just going to be a lot of bodies to get onto the battlefield and get those effects. So some ways I think that you could do that are using cool like populate or myriad effects. I haven't played with a ton of those cards because I feel like they're older mechanics and I'm a newer player. So I, my brain doesn't always jump to like wanting to implement those effects. But there are some cool ones that are like give your creatures indestructible, then populate, which could be really powerful because if you swing out, your creatures have indestructible. So you don't have to worry about losing all the tokens that you just made. And Myriad, I think, also is going to be a really interesting effect in here because, again, your commander doesn't require them to stay on the battlefield. It's just whenever you attack. So it's not like waiting about, like, you know, going to end step or anything like that. It's just when you attack, then the drain happens. So that's really important to keep in mind. And then some other strategies that I think about here that, you know, looking at, okay, what can we do with life gain? What can we do when we're making a lot of tokens? And so for that, I think it's important to keep in mind that you can use life gain to beef up your board. And so what I mean by that is if you have stuff like Archangel of Thune, where whenever you gain life, you're putting a plus one, plus one counter on creatures you control. Valkyrie Hardbrainer, whenever you gain four or more life, you're going to be making a four, four angel with lifelink, or maybe not with lifelink, but you're making a four, four angel that's going to hit face and hurt people. And Griffinary is another one where if you gain three, or more life that you make a token at your insta. So I think for those kind of effects, like if you can turn what your commander's already trying to do into additional value, like again, either you could do card draw, counters, making other tokens, this is just gonna make your deck that much more difficult to deal with and you're utilizing all the things that your commander can do. So on top of that, with other strategies that come to mind obviously token go wide is there and there's a lot of effects that you can lean into with those sort of effects with just generating a massive amount of tokens and swinging out i think something else to keep in mind is you can also just do things that add evasion to your board so things that make it harder for you to block or, or for your opponents to block so giving things flying giving things menace giving things uh you know protection from creature colors or something along those lines that you can swing out and still feel confident that your board's going to survive whatever attack you do. The other thing is that you can make it, uh, or I should say, discourage your opponents to maybe block by having things like Blood Artist out on the battlefield. So if your creatures, every time you're attacking, they die, and then when your creatures die, it punishes like your opponents. So those kind of effects are going to be strong like Zoloport Cutthroat, Bastion of Remembrance. You're going to basically punish people for blocking your creatures. And the other thing too is if you're kind of taking like the slow approach to like hitting people for damage, you could always swing with like one or two tokens 
and then if people are blocking those you can you know hit the table for a little bit of extra damage and over time that might add up to be a bigger thing if you don't want to draw a lot of attention early game to you so build your board state get your engine set up and then once everyone else is picking each other off you can just you know sack all your creatures to blood artist effect or meat hook massacre or something along those lines where you can just hit people for non-combat damage so there's a lot of ways that you can go with sort of like an aristocrat style deck that also can keep pressure on your opponents through combat and drain effects so it's pretty fun to think about like the versatility that you can have with this commander and the ways that you're trying to win the game so something else to keep in mind though is that if the main focus of your deck strategy is going to be attacking with your commander chances are people are going to block it and it's a 2-2 so if you don't have a way to beef it up and make it stronger it's probably going to die in combat because chances are you know, at some point in the game, your opponents are going to have a decent blocker. So it's important to keep in mind that in order to get these drain effects, you do have to attack with your commander. So what can we do to protect your commander? And there's, I think, a few ways that are going to be pretty efficient here. You have some ways to make it indestructible, or you can equip auras on them that if they die, they come back to the battlefield, stuff like that, where you feel more confident taking a risk attacking with your commander. But I think indestructible in like hexproof type of equipment pieces or aura enchantments are going to be really huge for that and even some instants because at the end of the day like if you just want to attack with like 10 one ones and you just want your commander to attack obviously with those to get all the drain effects if you can just you know cast an instant spell that makes it indestructible you don't necessarily need your commander to hit your opponent it's nice if that happens but you're just trying to look for like those kind of triggers so if your commander can at least survive through those like attack waves, then that's what's important to help you essentially win. And I think other ways that you can like make it harder to block is if you give it protection from colors. So things like Mother of Ruins where you can attack and then tap Mother of Ruins and you know add protection from whatever color your opponent's playing. Something else too to think about is adding effects that make your creatures undesirable to block. So one way to think about it is like, what are ways I can give my creatures death touch? And some people are like, whatever, I'll block. But I think you can gauge on the board of like how many people are going to be willing to stop, you know, your death touching you know, group of one ones coming at them, right? So just something to keep in mind there is just adding evasion or make it punishing to stop you from attacking and stuff like that. So other alternate win cons that I see for this, again, I touched on a little bit with some aristocrats like mentions, but I think the Chroma's Will is really good for pretty much every white deck because you have the confidence that you can essentially swing out with your board. And if you have your commander out, you just get keyword soup. So your creatures get like lifelink, double strike, uh, protection from every color. Like it's pretty crazy. So Chroma's Will, you swing out, you can deal a lot of damage and potentially have your commander do the last bit of drain damage to each of your opponents if you're looking to have like a big swing out close the game moment. Another card that's really important I think for this deck is going to be Great Merchant Apostle because it plays into kind of like a secondary commander effect because you're going to be draining out the table, your opponents, or X amount equivalent to whatever your devotion to black is. This other card I pretty much put in almost every black deck that I have, but Veto Thorn of the Dusk Rose is going to be really key because again, if you attack with your commander, you gain X amount of life, you can then hit target opponent for the X amount of life that you gained with Veto's ability. So that's just going to be a crazy powerhouse of a card, and I think really important one that you'll want to put in this deck for a win con. And then some last cards I wanted to call out for high synergy effects are going to be things like Rabble Rousing. One that Hideaway 5 lets you get some really sweet cards out for value, but you're making a ton of tokens, like tons of 1-1s, one and it's really not hard to get to that 10 where you can cast that hideaway card for free. So I kid you not, I've at a minimum before I've made 30 tokens uh, and hoped that no one dropped like a Massacre Worm or a Meat Hook Massacre, but you can do a lot of damage with like Rabble Rousing because you're just constantly creating a stream of bodies that you could either sacrifice or just keep attacking with. And your opponents have a hard time stopping it if you make five tokens and then you just keep attacking with five tokens every turn. Those bodies keep getting replaced. So it's just a really good card. 
something else too I wanted to call out where if you are making a lot of tokens and you're doing it at sorcery speed, it essentially will telegraph to your opponents like, hey, I'm looking to make a big board and swing out, which gives them time to either deal with your commander or deal with your entire board state. So what I like about a card like Secure the Waste is you can make a lot of tokens at instant speed. So if you're looking to try to close out the game and you need some more bodies to attack with and you know drain everyone out, what you can do is wait until you know the last person before you is hitting their end step, cast Secure the Waste, and then when you untap, your tokens no longer have summoning sickness and you could potentially swing out and close the game out that way. So I think Secure the Waste is really powerful just because you can make a lot of creatures at instant speed. The last card I want to call out too that I think is going to be a high synergy card is Saram's Expertise, just because one, you're making three colorless servo artifact tokens, but then you can cast a card with converted mana cost three or less from your hand without paying for its cost. So if you need to make bodies, you can do that. But if you need to put a win con out like Veto, you can cast that for free. So I think that card can help you, you know, not necessarily ramp up, but at least like rebuild or, you know, build up a board state pretty quickly just because of when you're making three bodies and you're potentially casting another body without having to pay for its mana cost. So those are the cards that I think will make a pretty good impact in this deck. I haven't had a chance to do a super deep dive or play in like a paper version of this, though I'd like to build it out. I am really curious though, like what your all like thoughts have been on this commander or if you, you know, have even had a chance to really play with this card, how big of an impact it had for you. It's pretty new still, so I don't expect a lot of people making a ton of decks with this commander yet, but I think it is going to be a very powerful commander, and I'm personally really excited to, you know, build the deck out with this. As always, please let me know what are some cards that you would like to put in this deck. I love hearing your ideas, and I just really like sharing, you know, the wealth of knowledge that this lovely community has. So thank you so much to everyone who's been supporting the channel, and uh, yeah. Have a good one. Bye.